We're back here on Fist at the first stop in your busy weekday. It's just about 7.47 and we're going to be putting the spotlight on dealing with the issue of trauma in Trinidad and Tobago. We have in with us um, the Vice Chair of the Trauma Society, Brian Weeks, and we also want to give a special warm welcome back to our trauma specialist, uh, Raniild Malnati. Correct. Yes. Good morning. Welcome back. Good morning. Good, Good to morning. have you. Um, uh, the first time we met you, you were in the process of facilitating some workshops, uh, doing training um, for our, our local specialists here to go and, and uh, to do this specialist work with young people. Um, how do you feel about the work that was done back then? And um, have they been able to you know, put into practice much of what you would have uh, taught them? Okay. You know, one thing we did realize is they need continuous supervision. The people we taught, mm -hmm. that they learned the technique in an intensive four-day workshop, and we have not emphasized enough that they need continuous supervision. And I met with a group of people that did the training before, and I found out that that's really needed with the local person. So Dr. Jennifer Dolly is going to work regularly with the people I trained here before and set up opportunities for supervision and practice so that they get really confident and able in the work. So I think they have done some work now, but it's been limited. So I think from now on, with more organized work, it's going to be more of an impact. And right now, we're training a bigger group of Trinidad, mostly therapists, that will work with people of all ages. Brian, Brian Weeks, let's talk about, for people who may not know about the trauma center, what the trauma center was set up for, how long it's been in existence, and, and, and how people can access the services. Morning, Chun Chun. Thanks for having us. Um, after Hurricane Ivan devastated Grenada, the government of Grenada asked Dr. Dolly to come and assist them in getting back on their feet. And that's why she was there, you know, in a, in a moment of silence, thinking about what's happening back here in Trinidad. And Tobago, um, she got this idea that we need a trauma center to in Tobago because of what is happening within, well, by extension, the entire world today. Uh, since that, we've had three camps, 2009, 10, and 11, and thanks to our three corporate sponsors so far, BPTT, Atlantic LNG, and um, British Gas, we were able to have camps for boys between the ages of 8 and 15 who have suffered trauma in their lives, you know, in terms of a homicide, and I mean, it's an experience, I have been part of it and it's, it's something else to see what these children go through. So we've done three camps so far, and I must say the results have been, you know, favorable. Um, we see with the follow-up after the camps, when the mentors are appointed and that type of thing, we see the boys, you know, who are getting there slowly but surely. The reports are well documented because we do these living camps with them. Uh, the first, uh, the, the camp of Talasi was at the campus in St. John's Road, the UV campus, where we actually live in with these boys. The, the tutors, uh, the clinicians are there with them. You know, they look at them, we engage them in a lot of different activities, that type of thing. So, you know, try and bring them out of. And during those camps, just see, you see all different sides of things that I have been exposed to some things, I mean, you know. I can imagine the release Unreal. process for them must be very explosive. You know, and you see both sides of the boys when they come into the camp. You know, they, they don't want to talk to anybody. They want to do it. And within two days of the camp, you know, they jump in on you, what has happened, and then in a split second, you know, they back because these things flash back, eh? They will get flashbacks, that type of thing. What age groups are we looking at here? The first three years, we did them about eight or nine to the ages of 15. And we just did boys. At the launch last year, well, the last Minister of Gender and Youth Affairs, she said, you know, this is something that we need to do year-round. So the latest analysis that the university did, they saw the good work that we did 
Dr. Dolly, Mr. Dolly, and all the creations over the years. And what we're not having a camp this year, we're preparing for next year where they think it's not a camp anymore. No, this is, this is not a project. This is a year-round thing. So we're looking to get into the trenches. Ho hopefully we can get corporate change on board to, because it's, uh, it's going to cost us a lot to set up the secretariat and that type of thing. So that, you know, we can have these young men, these young women, and by extension, look at what happened with, with the new highway. You know, all the, we are a very traumatized society with, with what we go through today. Rajneel Malnati, you know, sometimes people hear trauma and we like to think of ourselves as a resilient people. But being a resilient people does not take away from the fact that experiences in our lives have <coughs> deep seated effects on every aspect of our lives. Let's go through, especially for a child, a tr how, how impacting, how, how significant in terms of impact a traumatic event, the death of a parent, uh, a very violent interaction, the, the, the witnessing of a homicide, the, the, the experiencing of a rape or an abusive situation. What goes through that child's mind and psyche? You know, it has an effect for life. It doesn't only affect them for a short while. And what happens when you experience something traumatic is that you push it away. They don't want to experience it. So, but because they haven't looked at it thoroughly, a child is not able to do that. They can just avoid it. Then it works on the stimulus response effect. So all through life, when they are presented with si stimulus that remi remind them of the trauma, they feel bad or react uh, inappropriately, and they don't even know why, because they forget the trauma, and their reactions are still there, because the trauma is still in the unconscious mind. And the techniques of traumatic incident reduction can find and uncover these traumas and release them and make a big difference in the happiness and well-functioning of the person. I've heard someone describe the situation that some of these youngsters would have gone through. It's as though um, they have a traumatic experience today and they put it in a box and something else happens to them, particularly if they're in, if they're in really terrible family circumstances where they're constantly being abused. So every time something happens, they put it in, in this box and they, and they push that box under the bed until it comes to the point where the box is so full, there isn't any more room to put traumatic experiences in. It's bursting at the seams. It can't fit under the bed. They're faced with everything in front of them. And that's where we really get problems in society. Um, how, how, do, how do the experts deal with that? or murdered someone who's, who finds themselves in that situation? The traumatic incident reduction techniques releases this gradually, piece by piece. Not the whole box, but you take what's most visible for the person and deal with that and then the next piece. And it's very important to do because somebody that has been abused over a long time often becomes an abuser. It's a stimulus response effect, and then it continues in society. So by working with the person and releasing that trauma, you have a chance of it not happening again in the future. So we want to train people widely, not only therapists. Lay people that want to help others can do this four-day traumatic incident reduction training. And with continued supervision that we now have set up better they can continue working when there are situations in society. We're going to take a short break. We're, to <laughs> We're still with uh, 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 Raghil Manati and also Brown Weeks from the, the Trinidad to Bigger Trauma Center and discussing the importance of, of formalizing this trauma center mm -hmm. uh, to enable it to do more exciting work in Trinidad to Bigger because whether we realize it or not, we all go through several levels of, of trauma on a daily basis. Sometimes we push it away we, and we don't realize how it's building up and it's manifest in what we see on the roads, what we see in, time, in terms of our interactions, what we see in terms of the way we, we seek to resolve issues in society. Right. So the trauma affects us uh, even if we don't always know it, like you said. And it's not only a big traumatic incident. It can be a very upsetting incident, like a big fight, 
or being fired from a job, uh, all of that can be addressed with traumatic incident reduction. So it's not for quotation mark crazy people, it's for anyone who wants to improve and be happier in life. And therefore, we want to train people widely and to be able to do that, I'm currently training three trainers here in Trinidad that are part of the trauma center. And then they can train other people to do traumatic incident reduction. And then they will train trainers in the future. And we want to have a society where anyone can get help swiftly and effectively. That's the goal. Now, uh, Brian Weeks, I know that uh, this is a special project that would have driven this process and brought it to this point. But has there been any networking with any other NGOs that work in the trauma field? And I'm thinking of, for example, um, Chad Line, the Rape Crisis Society, and so on and so forth. Not just yet, Jesse. What, what we're in the process of doing is we trying to establish the center mm -hmm. totally for what it stands for, bring it to the public. Uh, we are planning a launch, a proper launch. We want to make sure we do it properly. We get the right people here. The reason being, we need the support of corporate TNT to support us in doing this. I mean, thanks, as I said, to Atlantic LNG, BBTT, and British Gas for what they have done before. And we know that um, most probably they, they'll be with us. But uh, notwithstanding that, we need a lot. We need to work towards getting a, you know, a building because this is not just a camp anymore. The camp is one aspect of it, and they go through a lot during that camp. We need to get to a situation whereby we have a home established for these people who experience that. And in order, to, uh, once we are settled with our launch, you know where we are. Then, by extension, we want to get into all the different organizations that contribute, because sometimes. You have organizations that do different things at a different skills level. With Ms. Mag Magnalty here with us, we hope to establish a certain benchmark whereby, you know, as I said, she could be in September. People want training. People are calling and asking to be part of. So once we could get that established, by all means, we would like to bring everybody else on board. So maybe, you know, we could aim towards one happy family to take care of. All that is our premise in Trinidad and Tobago. Apart from uh, networking with corporate TNT for that kind of financial support, is there a, a similar exercise going on with the Psychologists Association so that you would have support from them as well in terms of the staffing at the center? To, you know, more and more professionals are giving up their time to, to deal with the clients who come in there. Eventually, yes, we want to look at that, but what we are also looking at is spreading the word to communities because of the work Rangel is doing here in Trinidad and Tobago today. We're looking to share with, um, the training throughout all the communities so we could actually have people doing counseling within communities. That's our ultimate goal. We want to get people doing counseling in communities. Uh, there's a Facebook page and um, you know we're developing the, what you may call the, 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 the IT side of it so that people can log on. We are even thinking, we have been in discussions, our board, we have been in discussions as regards, how do people become members? If I become a member, what do I enjoy? You know, do I get discounts? In, you know, all these different things we are looking at. So it's just not a say we can pick up today and do it tomorrow. I think it's gonna take us at least by the end of next year mm -hmm. to have the structure that we want in place down pat. How, how do people contact you? if they want to, one, contribute <coughs> funds, uh, support, financial support, or to uh, avail themselves of the training from the trainers that, that man that he's is, is train, is tra are training right now, is training right now. That, is, I mean, that information I cannot really give you offhand if you song by because we're doing so much. But mm -hmm. rest assured, we'll be going out there, I'll p get back on the information to you. You know, the Facebook page, that is about, that's about now being designed. Mm -hmm. But Dolly and Associates, they are known um, Devatai Street and Woodbrook, Mr. Um, I could call a number of fans, 685-6422. You know, six that's Mr. 685-6422, that's Mr. Dolly's number. Mm -hmm. They can also call my number, 790-7916, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, but we, we, we just developing our Facebook page, uh, we, we want to do our web page. 
we have different members on the board who are you know, presently working on these things right now so that we can pull everything together. So you still have more information to share. Thank you for We have a lot of information to share and I do hope uh, Paul and Jesse recognizing the fact what is happening within our society that you all would give us an opportunity maybe to come back with Mr. and Mrs. Dolly you know because it was their dream to share. The door is open. The door is Absolutely. open. Yes. Right. Thanks much for sharing that with us. And thanks for uh, being with us this morning Brian Weeks and Ranyeld Malnati. Malnati.